world famous weather for weather geeks on this Monday evening. Welcome to Daylight Saving Time. Sunset this evening a little after 7.30, even though it's just a gloomy evening with a lot of clouds and we won't be able to see that sun dipping below the horizon this evening. We'll get a chance to see a nice sunset coming up on Wednesday. In the meantime, some wintry weather is the uh, story as we go into the new work week. Before we get to tonight and tomorrow's potential issues, let's rewind the clock 30 years. Do you remember what you were doing uh, 30 years ago this evening. If you were alive and in our area, you were dealing with a doozy of a snowstorm. And it wasn't just here. I mean, this snowstorm was a huge problem from Alabama, north and east through Georgia, the Carolinas, Virginia, all the way up into uh, a good chunk of the eastern United States. Now, locally at the Youngstown Warren Airport uh, with this storm, sometimes called the storm of the century or the superstorm of 1993, we had about 15, 16, 17 inches worth of snow kind of in the middle of our viewing area. But uh, just across the state line into Pennsylvania, two foot amounts were pretty common around Pittsburgh and just two and a half, three hours to our east over towards State College, PA, home of Penn State University, uh, the main campus, they had 30 inches worth of snow with the storm of the century back in 1993. This uh, really was a problem in the south, more so on the 12th, but by the 13th, which was a Saturday, uh, this was rampaging through the eastern U.S. Here's a look at the surface map showing generally what the radar looked at. We've got the surface plot up here. Uh, this was about uh, 4 or 5 in the afternoon on Saturday, March 13th, 1993. Look at that tremendous amount of snow just a couple of hours to our east. We were on the western fringes, but we were close enough to the center of the low over here that uh, we got in on some hefty, hefty snow totals. And it was cold, too. I mean, temperatures in the teens at the height of this with wind chills down in the uh, single digits below zero. A lot of times when we talk about snow in March, it's a day like today where snow's flying, but it's having a hard time sticking. That's because the rates were pretty light for the most part today, and also the temperatures, mostly above freezing. With this storm, even though it was March, and even though it was the afternoon, it was in the teens. And, of course, the snow rates were much, much heavier. All right, officially at the Youngstown Warren Airport, as of the issuance of the climate report, we had... 0.9 inches worth of snow registered since midnight, bringing our monthly total to a whopping 2.4, but that's still 3.3 inches behind the average. Now, the snow rates this afternoon were, were mostly light. Occasionally it ticked up a little bit. It looked like a snow globe out there, but it had a real hard time sticking on the roads, of course, and that's because... Well, it's March, and also the air temperatures looked like this for a lot of the afternoon, generally mid-30s. And, and when I say it, it's March, even though we didn't see the sun today, it's still up there behind the clouds. That incoming solar radiation in March is much, much stronger than it was a month, especially two months ago. So it still makes it really hard, even when it's dead overcast, it makes it really hard for the snow to stick on the pavement unless it's coming down really, really hard. Now, it's going to be an interesting evening, I think. Uh, our band of um, mid to late afternoon snow is pivoting to the east as of this recording at 710. This is what I'm going to be watching up here. It's a little mini area of low pressure, actually just off the coast of Cleveland, up over Lake Erie, uh, a little swirl up there, and as this dumbbells to the south and east, I think uh, snow rates will start to pick up again as we head deeper into the evening, and because it's evening, it'll be dark out, and it'll be a little bit colder, I think that snow will have an easier time sticking across the area. All of this is with a pretty big, uh, deep, uh, potent trough of low pressure, an upper level low almost, you can kind of pick it out right here on the water vapor. Uh, this is dumbbelling through the Great Lakes, and the air is really, really cold aloft underneath this trough of low pressure or this upper-level low-pressure system, and that really cold air makes the atmosphere pretty unstable, and especially over the Great Lakes where everything's unfrozen. Uh, it can make things very, very unstable in this kind of a setup. So, again, as we go deeper into the evening, uh, we'll be keeping a close eye on the radar by about 9 to midnight. Uh, we've stopped the clock here at 11 or so. Our little mini area of low pressure maybe almost right over our viewing area. So any of this snow that falls later this evening will have an easier time sticking than it did during the day. And again, it could come down at a pretty good clip. Um, as we go past midnight into the overnight hours, I'm expecting the snow rates to decrease again. There'll be some flurries lingering and maybe a heftier lake effect snow shower in the mix as well. Hard to say where this will set up, but it's possible a little Lake Huron connection might form overnight into tomorrow morning and deposit some, some additional uh, accumulating or measurable snow, especially in Mercer County, I suspect, um, later on tonight into the daylight hours on our Tuesday. So between now and Tuesday, generally speaking in our viewing area, snowfall totals will be pretty modest, but you won't need a whole lot to cause some slick spots tonight into tomorrow morning. And if you're traveling north, uh, closer to Cleveland, closer to Ashtabula, heading up I-79 towards Erie and Western PA, you're gonna run into some higher totals between now and late in the day on Tuesday. 
been in our TV viewing area, an inch to two or three should about do it. So some localized amounts of two or three inches can't be ruled out. Now, some of us will see probably less than an inch between now and Tuesday. But as a general region-wide average, one to three should about cover it. So on our Tuesday, it's going to be cold. It's going to be blustery. There'll be some flurries around. Best chance for a heftier lake-enhanced or lake-effect snow shower will probably be in the morning on Tuesday. So we get into the afternoon, probably not much more than flurries. And then clouds will finally clear out by Wednesday morning, and actually it'll be bright and sunny Wednesday afternoon as temperatures get back to about par for the course here in mid-March. Should make it into the uh, mid-50s coming up on, or uh, mid-40s, I should say, coming up on Wednesday. Then we'll make it into the mid-50s at the end of the week. Clouds will increase Thursday. This will be followed by a chance for showers late Thursday and especially Thursday night. And I'm somewhat optimistic that we'll get a lot of this wet weather out of the way by the afternoon on St. Patrick's Day. It's a Friday this year. I suspect a lot of people will be, or maybe some people, will be taking the day off on Friday, making a long weekend out of it and joining in the festivities at many area establishments on Friday. And uh, if you're going to be trying to uh, maybe uh, have a green beverage outdoors, a lot of the afternoon might end up being dry. Best chance for showers might be in the morning. It's a low confidence forecast at this point. Higher confidence that it'll be mild. Temperature should get into the 50s Friday afternoon. But that warming trend at the end of the week is going to be brief. It's basically a two-day thing, Thursday, Friday. By the weekend, we're back below average by a fair amount. We'll spend the weekend kind of like we did this past weekend, mostly in the 30s. Temperatures should then kind of moderate a little bit next week closer to average. But we've got a cold, cold weekend coming up after this late week thaw. All right, stay tuned on social media this evening and on 21 News at 11 uh, as we keep track of uh, potential snow showers this evening. And uh, of course, you can uh, track the uh, snow shower activity on the interactive radar on the Storm Tracker 21 app. Uh, but uh, we'll keep you updated on social media as well and on our newscast tonight. Have a great rest of your Monday night. I'll see you back here on Tuesday.